Hello, and welcome to Call Center Service Innovations Give Drivers a Roadside Assist. This automotive news webinar is brought to you by Amazon Web Services. We're delighted you're with us today for this presentation. I'm Dan Shine, Senior Editor in Automotive News. Before I introduce our speakers today, a navigation tip. We encourage you to ask questions at any time. Just type them into the Q&A box on the left side of the webinar window and then hit send. I will steer your questions to our speakers toward the end of the session. Today's speakers are Martin Lund, Product Manager at Wireless Car, and Sushant Damdekar, Solutions Architect at AWS. Martin has been in the connected car industry for more than 10 years, and his vast experience of working with global OEMs from different positions in R&D, sales, and product management. Sushant is a trusted advisor and helps automated, automotive customers to build highly scalable, flexible, and resilient cloud architectures and help them follow the best practices around advanced cloud-based solutions. And now I'll turn it over to Sushant to get us started. Thank you so much, Dan, uh, for this introduction. And today I would like to give you, first of all, a quick overview of uh, the agenda that we are going to follow. So I would like to first start with how the automotive industry is going from hardware-driven to software-driven and experience-driven industry. Followed by that, I would like to touch upon quickly what is the role of AWS in this uh, transformation journey. And I would like to highlight how AWS is being an enabler in this transformation uh, of the OEMs. Now, speaking of transformation, automotive call center services plays an important role to increase customer experience, safety, and loyalty. Martin will talk us through how, what, what is the call center service and how it works, what are its opportunities and challenges, and how Wireless Car and AWS are, are helping OEMs capitalize on this opportunity. Followed by that, we would like to deep dive into how AWS and Wireless Car has built automotive call center solution and then we will get an overview of all the components that are associated uh, with this solution. In the end, we need some kind of front end in the car so that we can provide end-to-end -end services. And this front end is often provided by Alexa. So we will see how Alexa Auto SDK becomes a voice-enabled front end in the vehicle. And finally, Martin will cover all the key takeaways before we go to the question and answer session. So being said that, let's jump in. So when automotive CEOs talks about digital transformation, they often refer to these four major trends. The first one is the connectivity. The number of cars that are connected on the road, it's set to rise to 470 millions by 2025. And, and when these cars are being connected, they will work like a smartphone where they're always connected to the cloud and they share the data. That will enable us to provide large number of different connected vehicle services to the end users as well as for the society. The second trend is autonomous driving and companies from OEMs, the big take to startups, they're investing heavily and developing level four and five autonomous driving systems. The third one is a sharing. And as we know, the car sharing has been constantly growing in urban areas across the world. But in contrast to all these three trends, the fourth one is the electrification, which is already at our doorstep and with which in this, under this trend, we are already mass producing the electric vehicle, mass producing electric vehicles, and the trend has already kickstarted. But it's not just that this trend is changing. The customer expectations has changed during last couple of years. So before the customers were more focused on the hardware, if they want to buy a car or experience a car, they were focused on the hardware. How big is the engine? what is the mileage and so on. But now because of the electrification, a lot of things has been simplified. And now the customer is more focused or more get to buy in the car based on the customer experience. And this customer experience is now being driven by the software rather than the hardware. And that's why we see that every automotive company is trying to be a technology company or a software company. 
And that's why you are hearing this buzzword more often called a software driven vehicle because the customer experience is depending on the software. And that's why all the OEMs has to change their focus from hardware to the software for the better customer experience that is playing a key role. But the century old OEMs, a traditional OEMs, it's hard to have to, to go through this transformation. And as an AWS, we are playing a key enabler role in this transformation. So in this whole automotive transformation, the role of AWS is being a key enabler. And we are primarily doing this in four ways. The first one is that we are providing IT infrastructure and services such as compute, storage, networking, and database, and many more. And the second part that we are offering to our customers are technology building blocks, technology building blocks so that they can take these technology building blocks and build their services or their workloads on top of it. For example, serverless computing, IoT, machine learning, edge computing, and so on. They can just take these building blocks, use them, and just build their services. But that's not it. The third important area where we are working with our customers are providing them, providing them the reference solutions. And these reference solutions are a key area is because we provide reference solutions, reference architectures, and our customers take these solutions and architectures and make their own. And they build on top of that, that gives them something uh, that gives them a solutions and an architecture which are more secure, efficient, and powerful. And they can go to market really fast. The last, but finally, we are finally by working with Amazon businesses, business units, and a wide variety of partners, we are dedicated to develop automotive solutions that are market ready and can be used by our uh, customers and OEMs. And as we are talking about this enablement transformation and customer experience, call center services are becoming essential as a part of connected mobility to provide this best user experience. And now let's try to learn more about how wireless car is enabling OEMs adopt call center services using AWS. So for that, over to you, Martin. Thank you very much, Sushant. So I am um, Martin Lund at Wireless Car. Uh, before we move on, a few uh, words about us. So um, at Wireless Car, we enable smart, safe and sustainable mobility. Uh, that's our aim uh, by providing, being a tech partner, providing connected car services. And we have for more than 20 years turned uh, vehicle data into insights and digital services. Um, we are a trusted partner and we have today more than 8 million cars connected um, with our customers who are um, Subaru, Volkswagen Group, Volvo Cars, Mercedes-Benz and others. Uh, our offer is to accelerate service creation by offering what we call discovery uh, products and professional services uh, in uh, dedicated solution areas from uh, what we call connectivity, safety and security, journey intelligence, electric vehicles and shared mobility. Uh, we are headquartered in Sweden, uh, Europe with offices in USA and in China. Finally, we are more than 600 persons um, in the company with more than 50 DevOps teams focusing on delivering the right value at the right time. And the subject of today, automotive call center services is a good example of the type of services we are doing. And uh, into the subject, we first start with a little movie to show what it's all about.
I have identified a pressure failure on the rear left side of your vehicle. Should I call roadside assistance? Yes. Hi, I see you have a pressure failure. Should I send someone to your location? I see there is no need to move the car. It's in a safe spot. Sit tight, help is on the way. A mechanic will arrive at your location in two minutes. Call center services, a smarter way forward. Let's connect. Wireless car. So, what you saw on the movie was a typical type of uh, the services we will talk about today. Automotive call center services. So, this case, what, what we call roadside assistance. In the case of a vehicle malfunction, such as we saw on the movie, uh, tire pressure problem, or more severe that you have an engine breakdown or whatever, uh, you can call from the car. The problem is detected by the vehicle sensors, contacted with the roadside assistance partner, that will either provide you with a mechanic, a towing truck, or make a service appointment. Um, it's of great assistance, but it's not that severe as when we move on to what we call emergency assistance. That is in case of a vehicle accident or a crash. Uh, it could be automatically triggered by connected to the airbags. Uh, you're connected to a rescue operating center that will help you or by push of a button, SOS button, you can manually get in contact if it's not that severe or maybe if you have a health problem. Driver assistance is more of a help desk type of call, either it's for help understanding your car, or if you have any service inquiries, or for instance, um, security or problems or concierge services if you, um, maybe have unintended stop and want to get help with the hotel booking. And the last use case is stolen vehicle assistance. In case of uh, theft, you get maybe a theft notification that your alarm got off, or even worse, uh, it's actually stolen and you get, need help to get the car recovered. You get in uh, contact with the uh, police enforcement that will aid, by the aid of this technology, be able to track the car and finally locate it and recover it. Uh, so really good services for the consumers, but also of great value for the car makers. So these, are, these bullets are from the perspective of the car maker. So first of all, of course, as you understand, it's to make the vehicle use safer, more secure and more convenient for the users. Uh, that's of a great value that will build strength and the brand image. I mean, typically you are in a, in a situation where you are a bit stressed or distressed or really need assistance. So these type of services really provide value of helping uh, users in, uh, with great needs. And we have many customer testimonials who really show their appreciation how uh, good these type of services are. But this is also being uh, focused on by regulators. So we have like the Euro NCAP in Europe, where they grade the safety of vehicles. They are actually starting to add um, these type of services, advanced equal from in a couple of years. That will be part of the rating of how safe cars. And I think that's a good example how important these services are. Uh, from more connected roadside assistance, uh, it's much about protecting the after sales revenues by actually making sure that these assistance needs are directed to the preferred dealer network or appointed uh, repair shops. You make sure that the cars are directed to the right way, they are serviced with genuine parts, and by that protect the after sales revenues. Finally, we're just getting more and more attention is actually how these services can be used by strength and customer loyalty. Uh, it's a, a big focus from car makers to actually get more and closer contact with their end users, with the drivers and the users of the cars. And I always especially see now in the, the area of digitization, where more and more of the operations and interactions take place online. Uh, 
it's still of a great value to actually be in contact with the person and get help. And I think this this way of interacting really been binds stronger with the consumers and establish this direct uh, relation. And it also gives potential for um, upsell opportunities. While you have conversations with your customers, you can propose additional services, additional insurance, and so on. By, and by that, this moves from being historically a cost center to more actually you can see it as a potential for additional profits. If we go to here, next slide, and see how this works uh, on a, in a very basic high level overview. It's simply that the car has many sensors that can identify a crash or an accident or a malfunction, as I mentioned, or you activate it manually. When that happens, a voice call is made over the mobile network that connects the car with an operator at the call center. At the same time, data is sent from the car, the sensor data, to the cloud, where it's then forwarded and enriched with additional data and presented to the operator. So the operator gets a clear understanding and a clear view of what has happened. And by that, they can make the appropriate decisions on what to dispatch, if it's a fireman, a ambulance, or a towing truck. So that's kind of the basics. It looks really easy. But of course, there are technical complications here as well, much related to how you actually match the voice call with the data as they go in separate streams. And there can be delays, it can be interruptions, and missing data, and so on. And all in all, it's some type of technical complication to actually make sure that when the operator gets the call, they see it clearly and have all the data up front on the screen. And this is how it looks like uh, in the car. Some cars, they have three buttons in the ceiling where you choose the service when that is pressed, a manual uh, operation, or I mentioned it can happen automatically. Uh, the data is presented in front of the call center agent. And there they can see in this case for emergency, the type of airbags that has been deployed, number of belted passengers, where was the crash, but they also see the location of the car, who owns the car and so on. So, but this is not that super good customer experience because these three buttons, it's not kind of evident what button to press. Is it kind of a, more of a help desk thing or is it roadside, am I in emergency? I mean, that can be judged differently from different users. For instance, if I get a vehicle breakdown, in the middle of the night at the deserted uh, road somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I can be re and the weather is bad. I can real feel really uncomfortable and maybe press the SOS button because I, I am really uncomfortable, but it's no emergency. I'm feeling healthy, really. So, but I get the complete wrong service. I should have got roadside assistance. And but that's quite complicated to then reroute or redo it. And it's not so good customer experience. So what we're working on right now, uh, let's see in the near future, is actually make this uh, improve the customer experience and also work more on, on intelligent services. So by adding a personal assistance in the car that automatically based on the sensor data can make wise decisions and analysis of what has happened and propose actions towards the driver, as you saw in the movie. Also working with cameras inside the vehicle and outside the vehicle to provide a better understanding of the situation and also a better interaction with the customer. And I really believe in, in the use of video in interacting with the clients in the car. It's possible for the agent, of course, to better understand the situation. What is the move of the person's occupants in the vehicle? Are they stressed? Are they relaxed? Kind of how are they? And I think also it's a matter of uh, habits. If I look at my daughter, um, my young daughter, she never ever makes a regular call. She always makes these FaceTime, video calls, whatever. So I think it's a matter of uh, habits also that the future drivers, they are really used to have uh, video conversations whenever and wherever. And this was illustrated in the movie you saw as well. 
So data is of course as of essence. This is super important to get all the data you need to make accurate decisions and get an accurate understanding of what the situation is and what's going on. And typical data that you get is um, information about the owner and the driver of the car uh, based on previous interactions, their preferences, their history, all the data that you need to understand uh, the customer and provide a really good personal experience. Then we have information about the vehicle, static data as we call it, a vehicle identification number, number plates, model make, a propulsion type, if it's an electric car or combustion vehicle, is of course really important both for uh, rescue and for roadside. Uh, we have the dynamic data called mileage, fuel level and so on. Then we have an analysis of the situation. Where is the car, the location of the car, what is the condition of the car, uh, the fault codes and to be able to remote diagnostics of the car, what's, what's kind of the condition. And we also see coming now that you can use the sensors to better understand road conditions. It's like slippery roads or uh, use external cameras and see, uh, as you saw also in the movie, is the car in a safe spot? Uh, is it a good place to park, for instance? And use the cameras that exist uh, to better understand that. It could also be used in stolen vehicle situations where you actually get the chance to get the picture of the thieves, so to say. And finally, we have the accident analysis in case of an accident, that you see the number of belted passengers, the impact, was it a front crash, a rear crash, a rollover, how many airbags were deployed and so on. All in all, to get the best understanding of the situation and make the best possible response. But of course, there are challenges. It's not only opportunities. Uh, there are challenges to find the best call center partners for each region. Many are, there are a few who can do a lot of many different types of services, but many partners are specialized in the, the type of services they provide. And especially when you go global as a car maker, you really need to have a network of call center partners in order to get a good co geographical coverage but also good coverage and a broad service portfolio. And that requires integration, integration with vehicles, with the IT systems and the call centers, and they must re be reliable. I mean, if we think of it, emergency call is a service that saves lives. And of course, saving lives re requires that you have high availability and high reliability of the services. The data that I talked about, it's really also can be very sensitive data. So how do you protect that? How do you make sure that you're in control of that data? As a car maker, that is super important. I mean, the consequences of leaking data, we have seen examples uh, in all industries and that has high consequences. So be in control and understand what data you store and for what purpose you store that data is super important. And uh, given is uh, follow-up service quality and serve, uh, customer satisfaction to actually understand what's going on, what are the reasons customer call, what is the frequency, and how happy are they with the services. Very important in order to provide a good service uh, of today and understand what to provide for tomorrow. And finally, to have a vile business case, to be in control of operating costs and have flexibility. So you have a business agility in, in, in the way you can choose and select partners, providers, and to be ready to meet future needs. Uh, the traditional way we are doing this, and what we also have been doing for many, many years, is a pretty distributed setup, I would say. Uh, basically, the car has a phone book, so dependent on the service, it knows where to call. So uh, for emergency, it maybe calls one number for one call center and for roadside another number. Um, that has some um, complexity because on every call center, you need to do this pretty technical complex integration by matching data and voice. And that, of course, that integration needs to be repeated for every call center. Uh, it's hard to update the voice logic in the car. 
Some car makers are really good at that, but for other car makers, it is a challenge to update this road phone book in the car. It can take months before all par cars in the field are actually updated. So that's not very flexible. As I talked about, having to choose the type of service with the different buttons is not the best customer experience. And finally, by having this distributed setup, you have no central overview of the data that is flowing. It's all distributed and it's difficult to get an overview uh, of what's happening. And I actually use the latest technologies that are available to, uh, for like uh, AI and machine learning and so on to improve uh, the, your analytics capabilities. Uh, that is why we are working with AWS to uh, what we call customer engagement center. So a customer engagement center, we call that because it's kind of engaging the customer. It's an act to take care of all the different needs and all the different perspective of the customer needs in one place. So by that, we use AWS technologies like Amazon Connect, where we route all the voice and data into one uh, cloud instance, so to say. And there we make the decisions in the cloud. We can use, uh, listen to customer sentiment, uh, use um, what you call um, Amazon Lex, uh, like for uh, voice recognition, others in order to judge what is the customer needs. And of course, we use that together with the sensor data from the car. And by that, we can make the decisions in the cloud, what is the best appropriate action here? What type of service is it? Uh, by making this integration centrally, we lower the integration efforts. Uh, it's easier to connect the different call centers. And by that, we shorten time to market and also, of course, technical maintenance costs. Um, that we can route the data centrally, reduces technical complexity. And we don't have to update this phone book in the car. Uh, we can update it in the cloud and make be very more, much more flexible in the way we route uh, the calls and address the different needs. And this, of course, increases the business agility. And finally, so the customer can call one number, one reason. We take care of the, all the routing and the decisions in the cloud. Uh, based on that, together with more intelligence in the car, who actually can make decisions in the car and prov provide more sensor data, this will include in overall increase the customer experience. So by that, I hand over to Sushant, who will uh, talk more about the more technical uh, setup behind this customer engagement center. Thank you, Martin for this overview of what wireless car is doing and uh, what exactly this uh, contact center in cloud for automotive looks like. So as I was saying that AWS role in this whole transformation journey is enabling the customers and AWS is enabling automotive call centers with our service called as Amazon Connect. This is a very powerful service. So Amazon Connect can actually scale in an instant to handle unlimited agent and contact volumes. This is a huge plus. And not only that, but it provides more functionalities at one place. The first one is a self-service configuration, which enables, to you, enables you to do more rapid innovation. Take for example, in a legacy contact center, if you want to change something or increase your capabilities or add some services, you have to engage professional service and do the experimentation and need to re-engage with the sales and etc. But with Amazon Connect, customer can access every new feature that we are launching every now and then, and we are always dedicated to bring on new features as we go ahead in your management console. And you can get started with them in the free tier. So that increases rapid innovation. The second important thing for me is one app to replace many. Imagine that 10 different softwares in a legacy contact centers are integrated together to provide the customer experience that you want. But with Amazon, with Amazon Connect, you have everything that you need in a single service. So that replaces all, that reduces the complexity by great margin. 
The third and important aspect, and with in this aspect, we are going to deep dive a little bit, that is called as automated experience. And what I meant by that is with Amazon Connect, we leverage AWS AI services, allowing contact center operators to create the personalized automated experience with natural language processing. That does not just solve the problem, but that solves the problem faster and saves AWS customer millions of dollars in the operational cost by automating the contacts that can that does not require any agent. For example, the service calls, the concierge calls. The third as the fourth aspect of this value proposition is analytics. There's no denying that contact center generates significant amount of data. But traditional contact centers, it's hard to get that data, reach that data. And even if you reach that data, you need to spend a lot to actually get business insights from that data. But when it comes to analytics with Amazon Connect, we love to hear what customers say. They are amazed when they see the real-time analytics of the ongoing call. And also they can get historic reports, analyze patterns and performance on the existing data. And we do all this with AI ML techniques for sentimental analysis, categorization, and topic identification. So these are the kind of insights that you get from real time in real time, but at the same time, you can also do this for the historical data. And by the way, all you are under control of all this data in our service called as Amazon S3. So you can build with Amazon, with, with AWS service called as Lake Formation and all other security services that we provide, you can actually build a data lake or you can you can you can have the have people access that data only on need to access basis with the complete GDPR compliance. And you can export, by the way, this data to anywhere you like, but and and also analyze this data with any kind of software you want. But contact lens is is a feature in Amazon Connect which can deeply understand the business context and provide you better business insights using sentimental analysis, phrase detection, and much more. We will just deep down shortly in all these kind of new AI ML based features. And finally, as all customers ask, this is a pay for your information. This is a pay as you go model. So there's no licensing fees. And with Amazon Connect, you pay only for what you use and plus any associated telephony or messaging charges. So with Amazon Connect, there are no monthly fees, no long-term commitments. You do not need to, and the pricing is not based on peak capacity, agents, number of agents or maintenance. And this fosters, and this whole value proposition has already reported a hard cost saving of 30% as compared to any other cloud-based contact centers. Now that we have seen why Amazon Connect, uh, ha Amazon Connect enables our customers to build contact centers based on AWS. Now let's try to deep down a little bit more which AI ML features in Amazon Connect is helping customers automate this experience. So this is my favorite feature in Amazon Connect, contact lens because it can help you to do the sentiment analytics, analytics and analyze the trends of customer conversation in real time. And that, that is amazing because with that, you can identify crucial feedback for your company, your products and so on. So in section one that you see, that's the, that's the real time analytics of the converse, customer conversation. But at the same time, you can track agent compliance have they started with the proper greetings? It's the sign of has happened properly. And that this, this, this is something that you can see in the section two and which gives, which helps you to train your agents. But in the following section, you can see that the supervisors can go through the whole text and try to understand the situ customer situation and customer issues because with, con with contact lens, you can actually record the whole call and also provide the transcripts. So recording and analytics behavior is a huge plus 
from the contact lens. And you can also build the quick side dashboard based on all this information because then you can provide OEMs an additional service where they can see their product feedback in near real time or in real time. But that's not the only AI ML capabilities. There are more AI ML based capabilities that are being provided by Amazon Connect. As Martin was also telling about Amazon Lex, you can easily integrate Amazon Lex into Amazon Connect and you can build conversational interaction that feels natural to the customers and automate all those contacts where you do not need an agent because Amazon Lex understands the intent of the conversation using natural language processing and you can decide what should be the reply for that intent. The next one is voice ID. Amazon Connect voice ID feature basically gives you a real time call authentication and fraud risk detection. And that actually makes this voice interaction in the contact center more secure and efficient. And if you're wondering how this is being done, the voice ID uses machine learning uh, to verify the genuine customer by analyzing caller's voice characteristics. And uh, this is a big plus just to identify the customer. The next one is a uh, customer profiles. Um, this is also one of the one of the other favorite feature that I have. Amazon Connect basically has all the so Amazon Connect customer profile feature can unify customer profiles from number of different uh, sources that includes third party applications and provide your agent. Uh, a perfect view, up-to-date view of the customer, and that helps them to provide the personalized service. And the best part is Amazon Connect customer profile feature already has the connectors to connect to a lot of third-party applications like Salesforce, for example. And to end the call, you have what you always need is a call summarization this feature identifies a key part of customer conversation and tells and assigns and assigns uh, the key conversation topics like issues, outcome, and actions so that you won't miss anything. And along with this summary, there is a full transcript which is attached to the call to analyze or to just go through it later at any, any time. Now, Let's see how AWS and Wireless Car actually built the solution using Amazon Connect. So this is an overview of uh, the architecture that we built with, uh, with, with Wireless Car. So as, as Martin was telling, in the case of emergency breakdown service or concierge call, the car triggers a call to Amazon Connect that and also sends a snapshot of sensor, locate, sensor and location data to the connected vehicle backend via API call to Amazon API Gateway. If you are wondering what is Amazon API Gateway, it's a fully managed service that makes it easy for the developers to create, publish, maintain, monitor, and secure APIs at any scale. And in case of concierge or service call, um, Amazon Connect contact flow uses Amazon Lex which is a conversational interaction service that helps customer to get required information or do or perform required action without the need of an agent. But all conversations are recorded and transcripted after, give, after taking permission from the, from the customer, end customer. And contact lens feature actually gives us the real time analytics of the call. But if you want to analyze the call even further, you, and you can use the transcript and our Amazon Comprehend service, which is a natural language processing service, which uses machine learning to uncover insights into the conversational text. And based on this text, uh, based on this analysis, you can also build a dashboards for call center management, for OEMs, and so on. If the call needs to be forwarded to the agent, then it will get in the right queue to be picked up by the call center agent. 
and a case number is generated by uh, AWS serverless event-driven compute service called as AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda generates this case ID and it sends it to the backend connected vehicle backend service via an API call via API gateway. And as a result, when the agent picks up the call, the call center client shows the agent everything that they need to know, information about the car, sensor information, their location, also the purpose of the call and this case number. And this makes the agent possible to provide best customer experience to the end customer. Now, in terms of the concierge calls and service calls, we need some kind of a front end in the vehicle. And Alexa provides us a voice enabled front end into AWS connected vehicle backend. Now let's take a quick overview of how Alexa becomes a voice enabled front end. So to make Alexa the front end in the car, the Alexa Auto SDK contains the essential client software to integrate Alexa into the automotive or into the automobile. The Alexa SDK basically is a software package which can connect to the Alexa and expose the interfaces to vehicle software that can integrate with the vehicle software to provide calling, media streaming, navigation, call center calls possi possible and also turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Even it can integrate with the vehicle to control features like heaters, lights, and so on. If you want to have this experience, you can experience it in Volkswagen Multivan T7 vehicle. So this is how Alexa can become the front end for to provide end-to-end -end services. Now, over to you, Martin, to give us a quick, quick key takeaways from this session, and then we will head to the question and answer. Great. So uh, thank you very much for listening to us and the presentation. So takeaways, three things we want you to um, remember from this session. First of all, call center services. They still, they've been around since the dawn of the connected car. Now we're talking connected call, uh, call center services, but they still play a very important role of strength and brand loyalty protect after sales, support direct interaction with the customers. And we also presented how a centralized approach reduces the technical complexity, how it shortened time to market, reduced operating costs and increased business agility, but actually putting a lot logic in the cloud and make wise decisions there. And finally, as Sushant presented, how core flow automation and real-time historical analytics increases service quality and provide, uh, cust improves the customer experience. So if you want to learn more, please contact Sushant or me. And we also have some uh, questions, I believe. So I hand over to Dan for the Q&A session. Maybe we lost Dan, I don't know. So uh, I can take uh, one of the questions directly. We had a question about uh, video and the data going back and forth. Did that require 5G services uh, to work well? And uh, I would say no. Uh, today we have 4G, it works perfect to send data and, and voice. Um, so uh, that works, but with 5G, you get the more uh, continuous data stream from the vehicle to the client. Of course, that will be able to uh, provide more data and in a more real-time situation than we have today. But 4G, yes, we have today works fine for the use cases we presented today. Uh, now I think um, Dan is back. There were some technical issues. Otherwise, we continue. 
maybe Martin, you can answer the next question. How do you charge uh, for such service? Uh, there are different models for charging this. Uh, either you have a pricing model based on uh, consumption of the services or uh, based on the number of vehicles uh, using the service. It's uh, dependent a bit on the type of service and the type of customer we are providing. Maybe I can take the next question, which uh, has been asked. Uh, how do we, how can you handle the data sensitivity in the cloud? Um, it's it's fairly simple because you are, because the whole data is coming to um, Amazon. So Amazon Connect basically uses a service called as Amazon S3 to store all the data and uh, and um, OEMs uh, or the customer who is building the call center solution uh, they have uh, they are in full control of this of this uh, of this data and they can build um, gateways around uh, or they can build a security around who can access the data and how can access the data we have a prescriptive uh, solutions as well as services that you can put on top of that uh, to be GDPR compliant so that uh, you have only access so that a person has access only need to know basis for each and every type and you can strengthen the security at even low uh, at a, such a fine level like rows and columns in a table so uh, with the security that's our job zero at AWS and uh, you can strictly provide a very strict restrictions on the data access. Then we have a question about the diagnostics code triggered within the vehicle. How are you deciding which ones require Im immediate attention and delivery to the vehicle? Are there any standards in this area or is it up to the OEM to have their own classification for urgency and severity? Yes, uh, there are many diagnostics codes triggered from the vehicle. That's absolutely the case. There are some standards like the DTCs that coming from the UBD2 port. That is kind of the closest to the standard we have. Uh, but otherwise, it's really up to each OEM to understand uh, their vehicles and what uh, diagnostics code to look for and how to judge um, what actions to take. I think I'm back. Can you hear me, anybody? Anybody out there? Yes. Yes. I now we hear, hear you, Dan. Now. Welcome back. Oh. <laughs> All right. It's a miracle. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what uh, happened there, but my I must uh, my, my my Wi-Fi must have gone off. Um, I don't know where you guys finished off for your questions. If you're just going down the list, one through them all, but uh, what was the last one that you answered? It was about diagnostics codes. Ah, okay. Well, I'll just jump in here. With, um, so ask them, how do you perform rescues when a car is not connected? Uh, phone number or app or how? Uh, we focus on connected cars, so that's where we are. Uh, when they're not connected, of course, there are other means to connect by actually just making a phone call or uh, from your phone. There are providers of, of uh, where you actually base the whole service on your mobile phone. Uh, it works, but it's not as reliable in uh, like emergency cases, like when your car crash, you can't really rely on that your phone is still functioning. So, uh, yeah. but there are other means as well. But the connected car gets the best customer experience. Yeah, and, uh, and from the David. AWS side, just mm -hmm. one comment from the AWS side that there are different means of connecting different kind of connections into Amazon Connect from the technical point of view. So you have always more than one. Uh, option uh, to place a kind of a call or to reach out to Amazon Connect. Okay. So next question, David asks, uh, there are many diagnostic codes triggered within the vehicle. How are you deciding which ones require immediate attention and delivery to the vehicle? Are there emerging standards in this area or does each OEM have their own classification for urgency or severity? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's where you were off. We just answered that one. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you have to tell me what the answer is later. Uh, 
where let's see um I don't know if you've answered this one about the uh, bypassing the contract service agent center agent through integration with the self-service digital assets. Question number fifteen from Anthony. Actually, it is possible uh, because all kind of as I was explaining through the architecture diagram, uh, you can use the contact flows and Amazon Alex, Amazon Lex to to understand the intention or um, understand what the customer needs and accordingly with uh, natural language processing capabilities and other service integrations with uh, Amazon Connect, you can actually automate to provide uh, information if, if customer needs some kind, just kind of information that is something that you can provide after authenticating the customer. Um, if they want to provide, have some kind of action, then that, that, is also, that can be also automated um after understanding what it is so yes it is possible to automate uh, a lot of different scenarios uh which are self-service based okay um again i posit that we've already answered this one but uh why they ask uh, how do you manage and track multiple contacts from a customer or when a customer is calling about a previous issue that was not resolved uh, we rely heavily on CRM systems there as well, where you uh, that where we integrate with CRM systems that support the customer interaction with through various different channels, could be email, uh, chatbot, or the call center. So we also uh, where we provide the channel towards the car, there are other channels towards the customer that uh, we integrate with CRM systems to support. Okay. And also, those mm -hmm. CRM systems can be directly integrated into Amazon Connect with uh, with um, uh, customer profile feature. That is something I explained in the presentation. So that kind of CRM information can be directly also available in the, in the Amazon Connect. Okay. Uh, Michael from uh, BMW North America asks, uh, how do you see AI assisting the agents in real time during the interaction with the customer? And is other data considered in addition to the vehicle and location data, such as weather and maybe provider availability? How far, how far the customer is from home, et cetera? Uh, I can start on the data piece. Uh, we look for integrating other data sources, um, weather, of course, uh, in roadside or emergency situations, if it's really foul weather, it's good to know. Uh, slippery conditions, I mentioned, that we see uh, coming, that we use the census of the data, and uh, the distance in order to find the best uh, provider, and so on. Uh, on the AI side, it's just emerging. I don't have many examples on this, even if it really helps out to make uh, good decisions in the end. I don't know if you have some more examples to shunt on that part. So. From, from the AI side, um, if you know what kind of response the response the, the agent should have, what you can do is you can you can create the alerts so that uh, you can create the standard scenarios. For example, you have a weather data, you have all these checks that needs to be checked before uh, before you answer a breakdown call or during the breakdown call. Then in the real time analytics, you can basically set an alert which can alert the agent. If they forget something, if they do something, and at the same time, um, you can also build uh, real-time stream analysis of all the data that you have to provide uh, better understanding to the to the uh, to the agent. So this is something that can be custom built, uh, but there are also lots of other capabilities that we need to figure out in Amazon Connect, with which if you can build something, some 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 intelligent. Uh, system that can alert the agent because alerting natural language processing is possible. Also, the stream data processing is possible. Uh, we need to just think about how to integrate it to make the customer experience better. Um, Martin, there's a question uh, about advanced automatic collision notification, and uh, this questioner asks what you would like to, to see as the next step in standardization of emergency call and response. I think we have uh, standards around uh, what's called minimum set of data, what data is sent. 
I think it would be a good next step to see what additional data that could be sent and actually how to interpret that data. So maybe have some standardized approach of how you judge severity of an accident. That could be very valuable. Another piece mm -hmm. is actually the interaction or integration between the call centers and the authorities, the PSAPs, and how you transfer the data between call centers in, and PSAPs in a standardized and consistent way. Um, a couple of, I'll kind of combine these questions and uh, again, hopefully you haven't uh, answered them yet. But uh, someone asked um, if you have a network of tow providers or do you leverage a, a partner network of tow drivers and, and how do you, you know, find the best uh, tow providers uh, for, the, for each rescue or job? Uh, we are a technology provider, so we provide the technology and then we work with our customers who are the car makers in order to identify uh, who those best partners are. Uh, we don't make the final decisions of what partners the car makers choose to uh, work with. Uh, we take more of the technology provider role uh, in this. Got it. All right, I think we have uh, maybe time for one more. I know a couple questions. Uh, I'll have some information about where to find this recording after we're done. And if we didn't get to your uh, question that the folks at AWS will reach out to you and get an answer to you. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I apologize if this has been asked and answered, but someone wondered about the, uh, the video and all the data going back and forth require 5G to work well. I would imagine that if you have 5G, it works better than if you don't. But what's uh, what do you see as far as like standards and what minimum kind of conductivity you need to to make these calls go back and forth seamlessly? Yeah, we touched on it uh, when you uh, were not well, there. Uh, we talked that today's uh, connectivity is good enough. It works fine. It's actually worked good also 20 years ago, but the more bandwidth you get, the more data you can get and the more real time you can interact. Okay. Got and it. with the better connectivity, you can, it, it will be better to, it will be easier to provide the video calling services that can be integrated you with, with uh, uh, Amazon Chime and uh, call center service. So the video that you see, uh, for that kind of applications, uh, we will need more bandwidth. So the better the connection, better will be that service. And also the cameras that, that will take the photos and videos, uh, that will be easier to, to, to send them into the cloud for, for the analysis. Okay. Well, that's good stuff. Wonderful. Um, so this brings us to the end of our webinar. Uh, thanks to today's audience for your questions. If you asked a question and we didn't get, get a chance to answer, AWS will follow up with an email. Uh, if you learned something from this session, please tell your peers about it. The recording will be available in about an hour. You'll find it at autonews.com slash webinars. That's autonews.com slash webinars. Uh, when the webinar ends, a survey will pop up on your screen. Your feedback helps us create future webinars that are even more beneficial to you. Thanks again to Martin and Susha for working into the night where they are, and AWS for bringing us this presentation, and to you for joining us. On behalf of everyone in Automotive News, have a great rest of your day.